Hello. My name is Mike Pfaff, and this is my YouTube channel, Living in the Illusion. Uh, now, on our, our whiteboard here, we have the model that we used for the last video. And I'll reference that video up here uh, because we're going to carry on with some of the themes that were in the last video. So as a short review, uh, this is what we talked about. Uh, can science find reality in the illusion? Now, really, I could have said, can anybody find reality in the illusion? Now, what did we look at in our model? Uh, in the, in, outside of us is this infinite field of everything, this moving, undulating, back and forth field that encompasses everything. So outside of you is this infinite field, and we are embedded in it. And uh, now you look real close at this model, you'll see a lot of circles. Some of them have faces on it to represent everybody, because everybody creates their own world on the inside, based on their belief system, life experiences, memories, all kinds of stuff like that. So we take in information from the infinite field, create our internal world, and then project it, project it onto this field out here of everything. And uh, so I use different colors. So the purple guy has his world projected out into this infinite field of everything. Uh, it's his world. And therefore, it is real for him. And so out here is his reality of his inside world. And... Uh, orange guy has one, and the brown guy, and the blue guy, and everybody has their internal reality, their, their world, their created world, which is uh, reality for them, projected on here, and through consensus agreements within culture, society, uh, we, have, we say we have an outside objective world or reality. And there isn't any. This is just energy. It's what you're doing inside that creates the reality for you. So can you find reality in the illusion? There's no reality in the infinite field of everything. It's just energy. So that's what we talked about. But one thing I left out, and I forgot to mention, and I'm going to put it in here, and that is the reference in A Course in Miracles, because it will be advantageous for our next adventure today, and our new adventure. And this is what the Course says. Whatever you accept into your mind has reality for you. It is accepting it that makes it real. So when you, and basically what it's saying is, you take in information and whatever you make of that information is your reality. And that's what I was trying to say. So now we're going to talk about another interesting topic. 
And this is our subject for this video. And uh, I'll read it off my paper, uh, and then we'll look at it. It says, it's startling. Emotions do nothing to the body. Emotions do nothing in the body. Actually, I, that should be to the body. Emotions do nothing to the body. Uh, so, but I'm not going to change it now. Uh, in, in the description, in the description, uh, I've broken it down in, in the video description into two things. One of them is background, and then there's the program. And we're going to talk about the program. The background, if you want to look at it, goes through different interpretations of what emotions are or how they're used uh, in the egoic world. But basically, this is the egoic belief system. You develop emotions, and they cause the body to react. You develop emotions, and they cause the body to react. Underneath that statement is the belief. First, you have emotions, and then you have a reaction to the emotions. So that's what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to look at this model a little closer, describe it a little bit, and then we're going to get in to the action. In the center here, I have a black box. Why? Because a lot of stuff is going on inside of it. I call this black box the active mind. What's in the active mind? The mind, the brain, the central nervous system. That kind of encapsulates what I call the active mind, because it's active, it's interacting all the time. Mind-body connection is right inside of this. And it's a black box, because so many things are going on. Uh, almost infinite number of things are going on in any moment that it is difficult to pull it out and try to define it individually. Because it's holistic, it all goes together. When you try to uh, take it apart, uh, it, it, it doesn't make as much sense. So I just keep it as a black box. Now in this black box, a lot of things happen, but you have an input into this black box. And you have an output from the black box. And then you have the body's response, because this part, the active mind, tells the body how to respond. And in another video, I made the statement, the mind, which is most of this, the servant, uh, the body is servant to the mind. The body is servant to the mind. In other words, the output tells the mind what uh, tells the body what to do. So that's where we're at here in the little model. Now, as you go through the description uh, of the video, uh, you'll find a lot of stuff around stimuli. In other words, we are stimulized, stimulus. We get a stimulus to develop emotions. We get a stimulus. Now, what's a stimulus to this model? 
It's an input. It's input information. So that's what this says. Input information that is outside of you or inside of you, but it's information. Information. And the output is a signal, electromagnetic chemical signal that affects the body and the body reaction, a response to the signal in the body. So to paraphrase, ha, uh, or go back and take a look, you get in input, a stimulus. You manipulate that data. You get an output through the active mind. From that output, your body responds. So the output is the same between these statements. The reaction is the end. There's a reaction in the body based upon signals that are... Now this is the point that I want to make. This black box interprets, interprets, interprets the signals, interprets the signals. Where's the emotion? Where is the number one emotion? Well, there isn't any. It's just input, and then you interpret the input in this black box, which is, most of it is in your subconscious, conscious mind. This is subconscious, basically. Why? Subconscious is big. It's big. It's big. It's big. The brain, finite. Because it's a physical object. It's finite. Actually, it's not even a physical object. It's finite, though. Uh, and so the subconscious mind is the biggest. It holds all your belief systems all your values, all your uh, memories, all your judgments, all held in there, and those are all used to interpret the input information. So you have outside a uh, data, outside data, that you're picking up from the senses. This is sensory sensory input here. It's going in to the black box. It's manipulated. It comes out of the black box, and you have a reaction in the body. I'm stressing reaction because we're going to get to that in a moment. So now you have, an, but you have two inputs. If you'll notice, I have another line here. So there is another input. We have the data from the outside, sensory information. And we have data from where else could it be? It's from the inside. What is this inside information? Inside, this is inside. So it comes from here. So it comes from here, and it goes in here as input. 
This is a memory. Memory. That has been triggered by some outside mechanism or inside thought process. Now, as it goes in, now, and by the way, these two can combine. In other words, you can have input information that will signal a memory, and they will combine, and you will have an input, and then an output, which is a reaction in the body. What does the body do when it gets a reaction? It reacts. It reacts. And when it, I just dropped my little thing, and I dropped another one, but we don't care. It, re, it, it vibrates. It vibrates. Woo! It has a certain reaction. So it is vibrating. It is an energy system. So it's vibrating. Now, at this point, the memory doesn't need to be interpreted. It's already interpreted. It's already passed through this process. So it goes straight in. And this goes through another mechanism where it is interpreted. Now, the thing is, to the mind, brain, and central nervous system, it cannot tell the difference between the memory and input information. So these two, to the, to the mind, brain, and central nervous system, are the same. They're the same. It can't tell the difference. This part of you cannot tell the difference between new information and a memory. Now, this is important. And we're going to, not in this video, but maybe in the next one, talk about what happens when you get a memory inside of you, when it is triggered and comes back in. Because it's already been interpreted. This is the residue. The memory is the residue of your interpretation of an event. It's not the event. It's your interpretation of the event. So here we have the memory. The memory goes in there, whoop, right through, output signal. The body responds. Watch the model. The body responds as if the event or the interpretation of the event is happening all over again. So the body will respond to the output signal by the memory. And it will vibrate like the original interpretation of the event. And you will think, oh, it's happening all over again. Now, if it's a pleasant, happy, joyous memory, it's going to feel good. But if it's negative, abusive, it's going to feel terrible today because of the memory you made a long time ago. And you will say, the mem because of how you feel in the body, when you think of the memory, the memory 
is alive. Memory's not alive. The event is gone. The event is not here. And all you have that you are responding to is your negative memory. Oh, how do I get over this feeling in my body? Heal your memory. And that's where the problem comes up. And a lot of comments I get. How do I heal the memory? There are techniques to do that. There are all kinds of techniques. But your belief system is most important in doing that. You're going to have to change your belief system. You're going to have to change the way you think about yourself. Now let us go back here and take a look at this model. In the egoic world, emotions cause reactions. One, two. In my model, how do you describe how your body is responding? How do you describe how it is vibrating after this process? Well, you say, I feel sad, depressed, anxious, happy, joyous. So emotions you're using in here, you're using emotional, I got to write a bigger pen. This one isn't working so good. Let's try this one. Emotions sad, happy, and so forth. It's how you describe the feeling in the body. Emotions are descriptors of how the body responds. Emotions do not do anything. Why do we think they do? Because of the slow, very slow conscious mind. The conscious mind is behind this process. This process through the subconscious mind is operating at millions to billions of bits of data per second as you're processing the input information. The conscious mind looks at this later. The conscious mind operates maximum 100 or less bits per second. It has, it cannot, it cannot comprehend or understand the rapidity, the fast, over and over and fast worlds that are coming and going by the time the conscious mind catches up and makes you aware. So you believe, oh, this happened first, and that's why the body is responding the way it is. No. The body responds because of what's going on in here. And then your emotions describe, the emotions describe what is going on. Now in here is a lot of magnificent things, particularly in the central nervous system where information is passing back and forth. How those signals go on. Uh, in the body is great, but they don't make emotions. Emotions describe the effect of the signals. 
So we want to say, oh, uh, I'm sad, therefore I feel a certain way. I'm happy, therefore I feel a certain way. No, no. You feel a certain way and you describe it as being happy. You feel a certain way and you describe it as sad or depressed. It is the feeling in the body that determines how you're going to describe it. And you're going to describe it based on emotional words. Emotions have nothing, nothing to do with the body. Emotional words have something to do with our language. So this is 180 degrees away from the belief system of the egoic world. But like the original, our original ancestors who believed the world is flat until they were looked at it differently. And I'm suggesting emotions are descriptors and have nothing to do with what's going on in the body. The signals come in from two sources. They're handled in the body. There is an output and a feeling in the body. Again, I want to point out memories and input data, your mind can't tell the difference. It's going to treat them all the same and you're going to have an output that makes you feel that it's happening now. Even though your memory, which is an interpretation of an event that's gone, is gone a long time ago. But you're going to feel as if it's happening right now. And you'll say, oh, that makes me feel so bad. That makes me feel. You're right. That's how your emotions, that's how you're describing it. But it isn't happening now. It's just a memory. So if you want to change the output, you've got to change the memory input. You want to change memory input, you've got to change your subconscious. Because that's where the memory is. All right, now this might be a little long. I don't know. I haven't been keeping track of time. But give this some thought. You are much more than you think you are. But you are in an illusion, and you are looking at your world through the egoic belief system. And it's telling you things that aren't true, but you believe they are because you haven't had an opportunity to look at your world differently. Bye now. Sitting here feeling lost without you I toast to the moments, it's the truth The sun is rising slowly Kissing the hills with gold Those rodeo memories Under those lights We fell